Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about the whole body vibration plates. Is it worth the hype? Now, I'm really excited about this topic. It actually was requested to us. So if you have other requests based on what you want to hear or you've been told certain things or you've been told you should do certain things, let us know in the comments because this is how we generate topics based on what you're asking for. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on future topics. Okay, so whole body vibration. We're talking about those vibration plates today. Mm -hmm. And this was actually a topic requested by a listener asking, can you do a topic on whole body vibration? What's it do? What might the benefits be? Because I feel like this is something that there's a lot of claims out there as to what it's going to do. It's going to help prevent muscle loss. It's going to help with osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. It's going to help with relaxation. And we're going to dive in a little bit to what we think and what we're seeing in some of the research papers that we were able to find on whole body vibration. And I mean, there is a lot of research, but I think looking at like how they're pulling the research together and some new evidence is really important so that you can kind of suss through maybe some of the bias in papers. Because I mean, especially if you go to a place that has vibration plate therapy or vibration plate fitness, like of yeah. course, they're going to be pulling from the research that biases their opinions. Just research in general, we always want to be aware of this because research has to be funded by something or mm -hmm. someone. And there aren't a lot of organizations that don't have an interest in finding that a certain intervention, that a certain technique has benefit. And so it's really hard to find research studies that don't have some sort of inherent bias to them. Right. And we'll point out a little bit of what we were seeing in the vibration plate research. But first, just like talking about vibration a little bit in general. First of all, like I'm sure a lot of people have seen those plates. It's like the, the full little plate that you can stand on mm -hmm. and it vibrates. And it feels kind of funny if you've ever been able to stand on one of them. But like when you think about vibration plate, what do you feel like neurologically or physiologically the body's going to do in reaction to that? Well, you know, the claim is that it is, you know, because it's vibrating, it's making your muscles work at such an accelerated speed to have to contrast everything that's going on. And so you're getting a lot more muscle contraction. So you're going to burn more calories and you're going to lose more weight, essentially. Here's where those claims get kind of muddied. First of all, weight loss, we know it does come down to a caloric effort. Yeah, calories in, calories out, yes. that whole equation. Yes, it's not just down to what we're doing um, exercise wise. Of course, that can help. However, we have to be monitoring food and other things like that is bottom line there. Yeah. You know, and so it's really hard to just like, oh, it's going to burn more calories. Well, if you modify for calories, then yes, you can burn more calories. And it's interesting to me that like a lot of the claims that you see people trying to make are related to muscle gain or, you know, like strength gain, where in my mind, vibration seems to make me think more relaxation. Right. Right. And that where that makes sense to me is that like we have in our nervous system, these specific mechanoreceptors, like these nervous system receptors in our muscles and tissues that sense vibration at different like levels and speeds and can give us a response in, in that aspect. And just when I have st stood on them before, it, it seems to give me a like my own anecdotal feeling is that I feel like I get more relaxation coming off of them rather than feeling like, oh, I just worked the muscles. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, I've done an exercise class with them because of course it became popular in LA when we lived in LA. Yeah. <laughs> so I did a class. I cannot say that I felt any improvement or any more soreness than I would if I did a traditional lifting class like I usually do. And I think you're bringing up a great point is that in the research, that's where the bias comes in. It's right. like some research studies would basically compare doing a strength class on a vibration plate to nothing mm -hmm. to like a control group where people aren't doing anything and then they say oh yeah these people had an increase in strength or strength markers and whatever but in that case you're not able to isolate okay well what was giving them the improvement doing the strength training class or standing mm -hmm. on the vibration plate and that's where a lot of the studies we looked at we made sure that they were comparing exercise a apples to apples they were comparing mm -hmm. 
someone doing an exercise on the vibration plate or an exercise program versus people just doing the exercise program without the vibration plate. And that's where I think a lot of that bias, just like this as an example, people can say, oh, vibration plates improve strength. Well, maybe doing an exercise program or a strength training program on a vibration plate compared to nothing <laughs> will improve right. your strength. But let's compare apples to apples here. Yeah. So we'll get into some of the research. And I just want to also touch on, because you brought up like, you know, the bone health and osteoporosis. And here's where it just doesn't even make a little bit of sense to me is the amount of force that we need into the bone in order to create change is huge. Yeah. And you cannot walk to get that enough of that. You cannot lift light weights in, no, in order to get enough of that. You have to be putting a substantial amount of load axially compressive wise through the body in order to create enough change in the bone and we'll have another episode on what exactly can help with osteoporosis but this is why there is no really research that verifies that it's going to help with osteoporosis and bone health because where it may have some lim some some modifications on okay it can improve posture or i mean balance right which helps to reduce the risk of falls which helps to then reduce <laughs> fractures from osteoporosis maybe we can get there through that but yeah. we can't get there by saying you know this is what's going to help my my bone mass yeah that one didn't really make sense to me saying, oh, vibration plates will help prevent osteoporosis. Again, with the mechanoreception, I'm, I'm trying to make it make sense in my mind, like, does that stimulate what we call the osteoclasts, right. which are the things that form bone? Like, does the vibration get the osteoclasts all excited and they start doing some bone remodeling? Or again, is this stemming from studies that did strength training com in combination with vibration plate? In which case, my mind would tell me, okay, it's more the load coming from the strength training. I don't know, but you brought up balance. And mm -hmm. that was one interesting thing is we looked at one study that compared a vibration group with a strength group, and they were actually testing balance as well as strength mm -hmm. gains. Essentially what they found at the end that these two groups did a 12-week program three times a week, three sessions a week, same strength program, but one was on the vibration plate, one was not. And what they found was that there was no significant difference in the improvements they saw on the strength side. Mm -hmm. So both of these groups saw strength gains without a significant difference between them, but the vibration plate group saw significant improvements beyond just the strength group in their balance. The strength group actually didn't have more balance improvements than the control group that did nothing. So I think that's a really good takeaway though. Like balance is something that we have to be so conscious of as we continue to age because the risk of falls only in, you know increases as yeah. we get older and you know if you fall and you do break a hip the statistics of then when you know mortality comes after that is pretty yeah. high. So we want to reduce the, reduce the risk of falls from the get. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so if we can have something that is actually helping to improve our balance, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. So that's where I would say this, this has been shown to be beneficial in improving balance. Now, if you're a younger person who can do more advanced balance exercises where you, you know, you can have a ball being thrown at you on a single leg, like you don't need to be on a vibration plate. That's why I would say it probably isn't going to be as beneficial for you. Yeah. And just finding ways to challenge your balance within the exercises you're doing, doing more off balance, doing more single leg stuff, yeah. single leg RDLs, Bulgarian split squats. I don't know the exact program they used, but maybe they weren't using a significant amount of those type of single leg or unbalanced exercises. And again, the balance thing makes sense to me. With vibration, mm -hmm. we're going to get a lot more co-contraction around the joint. It's probably going to help us proprioceptively. It's going to help us have a you better... You have a lot more perturbation. You know, you have a lot of more... Whatever that's called. <laughs> Per perturbation. Thank you. I think. Is, um, but yeah, you have a lot more input coming yeah. from the outside world. So it's going to kind of stimulate that sensory nervous system more. So the balance improvement makes a lot of sense to me. Right. Then we go into, we looked at a paper that said vibration exercise makes your muscles and bones stronger. Fact or fiction? <laughs> Yeah. And really what they ultimately said is that in the short term, we can see whole body uh, vibration with the use of or the use of vibrating d dumbbells be beneficial in gaining strength. However, again, <laughs> comparatively, when you look at that compared to just using regular dumbbells or just using regular strength gains, like there's not going to be a significant difference. 
And what they're really, you know, what they kind of looked at, you know, going deeper into this study is that there's just a lack of understanding of the physiological me mechanisms involved in the adaptive responses of vibration exposure and the most appropriate vibration parameters to be used um, in order to see those maximized gains. So it's like we don't have a set like what exactly should the vibration plate be at in order to see this specific gain? Like we just don't have that kind of research. So it's hard to say that whole body vibration plate in general is going to make you stronger than just doing regular lifting. Or make your bones stronger, you know, right. prevent the osteoporosis. And to do a study like that would be, I don't even know if it makes sense to put resources into a study like that. Right because you're gonna to need to do something very long-term. You're gonna to wanna to have studies in people like that are premenopausal or you know, before mm -hmm. they go through some of these big physiologic changes in life. This paper specifically said there's a lack of well-designed studies yes. in elderly, but you don't really just wanna do it in elderly because then you're already their bones late. have already done yeah. a lot of the modeling that they're gonna do. You wanna do it for 20 years from late 30s, early 40s into the late 50s early 60s with dexa scans all along the way and it, and that's why we don't have research on a lot of this stuff right just not you know doesn't make sense <laughs> so also interesting to look at you know one of these these papers kind of looked at a case study of a 44 year old woman who was using a using whole body vibration and showed that it, she actually got what's called BPPV. So it's a type of positional vertigo that happens in the inner ear. And it said that it resolved itself. However, you know, we have to look at some of these potential negative side effects that can happen from continual use yeah. of a whole body vibration plate, such as dizziness, headaches, sensation of imbalance. And just be aware that if you are naturally someone who has dealt with some of these issues or you feel like you're easily triggered by some things, this might not be a beneficial thing to even explore for you. So I think yeah. it's just important to note that. And of course, this is one person, this is one case study, and this is just like a suggestion of yeah. what to be aware of. However, I think it's it's interesting to note and understand what is it really doing up into the head and to the brain, especially when we're going on it continuously. Yeah, and that's with like the prolonged use, these risk factors obviously get a little bit more risky or a little bit more profound um, if you're using it for long term. I even read in one of the studies that there have been listed risk factors of potential joint pain or mm -hmm. back pain. And so people who might have significant history of arthritis in certain areas in their body, prolonged use of it might not be recommended where maybe short-term use could feel good. But you know, if, if you're doing it for a long time, you're causing a lot of those joints to do a lot of work they're not used to, especially if you have instability in those joints or like I said, arthritis in a way that that could get triggered and cause different pain. And to me, the takeaway from the study relates to the balance thing because mm -hmm. this was done on people who had gotten ACL surgeries or ACL reconstruction. And they basically compared two groups, one doing the normal ACL rehab the other group doing that same ACL rehab with whole body vibration plate inserted. And they noticed that there was a benefit on the increase in knee muscle isokinetic strength, which essentially means knee strength as the knee is moving uh, compared to the regular rehab group. And so can it be beneficial in a rehab setting? Potentially, especially yeah. when you're coming from like an ACL reconstruction. I think yeah. that, you know, it could really aid in just gaining a little bit more of that um, muscular strength, especially early on after you've come from surgery. And I think that's yeah. where it's like most important. I, I remember I saw another study kind of on like patellofemoral syndrome and there was no different, there's no significant difference. There's no, yeah. you know, that it would help. And again, you're you're treating someone who already has the capacity within their leg and within their, their muscles to be able to work. Yeah. So just use regular training. If you've come from surgery, maybe this could be an added benefit. And the reason I said that kind of relates to the balance one is like the whole proprioceptive thing. Yeah. Anytime after you have an injury, especially if we're tearing any sort of muscles or tendons, we're going to have reduced sensory awareness of that area and vibration could, it looks like, could potentially help improve that more quickly. Um, so another yeah. benefit. And I know in some professional athletes and you know, and this is where it's like, well, who has access to this kind of stuff? You know, you're going to be looking at more of like a rehab clinic or or maybe more professionals. So if they're dealing with chronic ankle sprains, can this be an additive to potentially yeah. put on? Again, the research was a little mixed when I really looked at that. But 
if you have the ability, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad thing to add in. However, is it something that you should be exercising and training on all the time, expecting that you're going to have more muscular gains because you're getting all those co-contractions all the time? I don't think so. Yeah, that's not really supported. And again, with anything in research, like so many of these studies use different types of vibration, different frequencies frequencies of vibration. They're doing different exercises on the plate in general. So that's where sometimes I say like, do you enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> Does it help you enjoy a workout a little bit more? And are you, if you're not feeling any adverse reactions to it, great. If right. it encourages you to move and do strength, <laughs> right. strength training more, Great, use not it. <laughs> like yeah. not not going to be a bad thing necessarily. It might not be giving you a significant amount more gains, but if it encourages you to work out more, then, then it could be <laughs> then it could be contributing to your gains. Yeah. Like if it's something you enjoy. So overall, yeah, the balance improvements, the potential imp you know increased improvement with people after ACL surgery. Like there are some applications outside of that. For me, it's just like, do you enjoy it? If so, do it. Thanks for joining us for that episode on vibration plate therapy. Did you find anything interesting? Have you ever used vibration plate therapy before? And what did you think? Did you think that we missed anything? Drop any questions or comments below. And of course, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future episodes.